Hey yo, for real, this is a nefarious situation going on. This dude in here has been cashing out on new Hoyas for the past couple months. So what I need you to do is go in there and let him know that you're still the best one. Nah, nah, don't tell me you're nervous. <sighs> Take a drink of this. Fix your hair up a little different. I mean, come on now, you're the Crimson Princess. You look better than all of those other Hoyas. All of these other Hoyas ain't even got nothing on you. You know what, I'ma call him up right now. Hey, yo, D, we outside. Quick question though, you got some money with you? Cause I got some Hoyas with me. <laughs> I right, bet. Yo, Princess, showtime. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Aeroy District. In this video, I wanna show you a collection of all of the Hoyas that I currently have. And uh, yes, this one is still my favorite. This is the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess here. And um, I'll tell you the reason why this one is my favorite. It's because this variegation is awesome. Like you're getting, like you got about like four colors in here. You get cream color, yellow, lime green, dark green, then you're getting like these red, like some of these new leaves will come out red and they will pretty much stay red or kind of fade down to a pink. And um, another thing that I really love is some of these strands are just regular Carnosa reverted strands. And I kind of like that. And look how long it is. Come on now. So I really love this one. This is my favorite. Uh, and look, look, I'm going to tell you something interesting. Hoya Carnosa Princess is the first Hoya that I took notice to. And um, I thought it was like a desert succulent when I first seen it. So now I have a different outlook on it. Now I look at it like it's, um, it's almost like a pothos cross with an orchid. Because these kind of look like a cross between, you know... Um, like a manjula pothos and a, and a jewel orchid put together. So I felt like that was a, you know, that, that's kind of how I envision a lot of the Hoyas that they're crossed between those two. So uh, I, I'll get a lot of these uh, Carnosa types out of the way. I'll show you my collection of those. And then we'll move on to some new rare Hoyas that uh, I've recently purchased. So this Hoya right here is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. I just brought this one in from outside just to show you for this video. So I'll tell you a quick story on this one. Um, I purchased it from a shop and at that shop I noticed that it had a mealy bug on it and I still purchased it anyway because I knew that I was going to put it outside. So I had another Hoya, I had the Hoya Crimson Queen. Um, when I first purchased that one, it, it had mealybugs on it. I put it outside and the ants and the spiders literally did a massacre on them little mealybugs. So I figured the same thing had happened with this one. I have it outside placed kind of low to the ground and I figured that, hey, it's the same. The spiders and ants will take care of your plants. <laughs> so I'm going to put this outside and let um, the predatory bugs go ahead and handle this. And um, I really like it. I hope it gets long. It's doing fine out there. Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Next we have the Hoya Australis Lisa. This one is cool. It reminds me of the Hoya Crimson Princess, but it has more of a rounder shaped leaf. And it's fairly easy. I think um, these can handle a lot of light. I, um, at my old house, I did have one of these outside and it literally climbed up the bars on my window. <laughs> it, it, it just totally engulfed the bars on my window and I had to like pull it all off. So this one does like to send out long uh, tendrils and wrap around anything that it can. But uh, interesting fact, I was watching a video about Hoyas and someone said that when the Hoya tendrils wrap around the object, 
it likes to go counterclockwise. And I found that to be interesting because I had a Hoya outside and I tried to wrap it around the trellis and I believe that I tried to wrap it clockwise and sure enough, it just unraveled and almost hit me in the face. <laughs> and then when I wrapped it counterclockwise, it, it stayed in place. So that's, that, that's another interesting thing. But this is a Hoya Australis Lisa. I have a couple of these. One I have growing in the ground outside if you look at my previous backyard tour video. Okay, so next I have the Hoya Crimson Queen. And this is the first Hoya that I ever purchased. This is the Crimson Princess. So when I first purchased this one, it was already kind of hanging out the pot. Um, it was already kind of trailing and this one wasn't this one kind of pretty much caught up to To these and um, I bought these at the same time if I didn't mention that already, but check this out. Here's some new growth on this Hoya Crimson Princess And I think we have some new growth going on With this one also but I do like the Crimson Queen too. Uh, it's 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 a classy Hoya. Um, it has subtle variegation, and then sometimes you get these majestic-looking all-white leaves that do not burn up. They actually stay like this. If you see pictures of some Hoya Crimson Queens, you'll see just like a whole vine of solid white leaves with the red stem. So listen, there's there's a reason why. Some of these Hoyas are common. You know, you don't want to sleep on the common Hoyas. The reason why they're common is because they look the best. <laughs> they really look good. They look very palatable to anyone who hasn't seen a Hoya before. As soon as you see one of these, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a nice looking plant. You know, it's a, the, these are more of a, the no-brainer. So I see why they were cultivated and they became common. So before we go upstairs and take a look at the other Hoyas that I recently purchased, uh, I want to show you a couple of DIY projects that I've been doing. I had some time um, on my vacation to be at home and kind of do, I mean, one of the projects was I put together this plant stand that you uh, seeing right here, but um, I I'll just show you real quick another little project that I did. And um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I kind of con converted a couple of my plants to like a DIY uh, self-watering setup that uh you know miss jasmina low showed us so y'all go check out her page but check this out all right y'all i just came from ikea because i got a couple of diy projects that i'm about to do uh, i'm gonna change up a couple things in the plant room but before i do that i need to take care of this wall so these two little art pieces they not working out for me i hate seeing them when i walk past so so these is coming down and what I did was at Ikea, I found this picture frame. It has like the plastic on the top and it's cardboard underneath from Ikea. Um, and then I got moss from Michaels. And what I'm gonna do is silicone that on to this picture frame. But what I wanna do is give a shout out to the YouTuber Jasmina Lowe. Jasmina is the meaning of content creator. Um, because she's creative and she's hilarious like I can't wait to her her videos come out, but um She has a new um, YouTube channel that's dedicated to her plant content and she showed us how to make these DIY self-watering pots So while I was at Ikea Jasmine if you listening or if you watching this um, I found these little Glass pots for about a dollar twenty nine and they're shorter and it sort of has a wide opening and I was able to make my DIY that you taught us how to make with the little four inch pot and I feel like it's gonna work out pretty good and it well to me it doesn't look too bad so like if you want to make it a little bit more decorative got another little situation where you can put like some decorative marbles in there or something like that and then I um cut the holes like how you taught I feel like that's gonna be cool but shout out to okay so I'm finished with the the moss art project that I just did here it is the finished project 
it was a very messy project i would say um and i didn't have any type of design plan this is one of them things where you just got to let the ancestors tell you what to do because i was just freelancing going uh just going with the flow <laughs> Okay, so my plan was to go upstairs, but the lighting is garbage up there. So I just brought 13 Hoyas down here and put on this shelf so that I can show you all the collection. Okay, so first up we have Hoya Callista Phillip. Now this one is cool. Um, by the way, if I didn't tell you, most of my Hoyas, I kind of give them the same mix as Anthurium, where it is primarily moss and bark. A couple of them are in regular soil potting mix, but um, for the most part, I use moss and a lot of bark. I would say more bark than moss, sphagnum moss, that is. And um, the only difference between what, uh, as far as the watering is I let Hoyas dry out completely before I water again compared to anthurium where um, if I sense if I don't see any condensation in the pot I, I go ahead and water again so take a look at this Hoya Callista Phila I really like these types of Hoyas right here like <laughs> I like those big old rugged nasty looking Hoyas that have like these veins and they just look like they just came straight up off of the barbecue grill so you know for my wish list i do want the hoya undulata and then that other hoya that looks kind of like the callista filler but with but with even more veins like these are cool so i'll tell you um what i did this hoya right here helped me understand the behavior of a lot of these hoyas because when I first got this one, it did nothing for me. It just sat there with uh, maybe what, five leaves that it had. And it sat there for like two or three months. And then all of a sudden, like a boom, like a grenade, it had eight little baby leaves uh, uh, developing all at the same time. Now one after the other, like at the same time. So um, when it did that, I did propagate it and um, the mother plant is now gone. These are propagations from that mother plant. And sure enough, it did the same thing. It took like a little couple months rest and then boom, just uh, in December or January, it, it popped out with all of these um, new little leaves. Got a shoot right there. These are just some leftovers, but a lot of this along the top is new growth. So that's Hoya Callista Phillip. So up next we have Hoya SP Vietnam. So if you ask me, uh, this one looks like a Hoya Carnosa, but uh, I was talking to one of my Instagram friends, uh, Eric, shout out to Eric. And he was giving me a lot of insight on the care for Hoyas. And he was saying that this one is pretty sought after. And also, if you if you look at my last video with the uh, background uh, uh, backyard tour, this was in the ground. And soon as he tell me, he, soon as he told me that this was sought after, I told him that I would give him a cutting, and I dug it up. And these are some of the propagations. I have another cup that uh, that are propagating also because I'm gonna go ahead and share one with him. But this is the Hoya SP Vietnam. Looks like a regular Carnosa to me, but um, I don't know. I purchased it as the Hoya SP Vietnam. Next we have the Hoya Latifolia. Hoya Latifolia, um, or did, like I guess common name would be the dinner plate Hoya. Because this Hoya right here will just, it will get just large and round like the size of a dinner plate 
I guess that's why they call it the dinner plate Hoya. But these are propagating right now because um, I got these for free. <laughs> so, yo, okay, so um, I purchased a couple of the other Hoyas from a Etsy page um, called Yorba Plants. And she just so happened to live about 40 minutes away from where I live. So I was able to do a local pickup. And, you know, the fact that she didn't have to pack these up and put them, you know, ship them to me. She gave me a cutting for free. And now I have these uh, Hoya Latifolias. And it, it was one of the best experiences I had, like, purchasing from an Etsy seller. Because she's so passionate about uh, her Hoyas. And it, it, it was really dope. But check this out. It's already sun stressing, if you can see that. And I have it rooting in pretty much the mix that it's going to live in. It's like sphagnum moss and bark. And this is the second one. It's another leaf in there, if you can see. So next we have the Hoya Sigillatis. So I actually purchased this one from Houseplant Nation. I took a tour of that uh, store in previous videos and these are just oh, uh, propagating piece of bark just fell out and uh, it kind of scared me <laughs> but this is Hoya Sigillatis this one um I heard it's difficult I heard it's a little bit difficult because you know you got to keep it warm you got to keep it well watered you can't let this one dry out as often as a lot of the other Hoyas a lot of my common Hoyas um they're kind of bulletproof they handle anything they can dry out for some time and um i can water them often too i, I did notice one time i was over watering and a couple yellow leaves and then that was it it, it bounced back from that but let's get back into this hoya sigillatis i think the splash on this is what makes it really cool and these can turn like pink and red very easily with a uh, high light but just to talk about some sun stressing because I do want to also, I do want to sun stress my Hoya Callistophila. So I noticed with my cactus outside, they kind of, the cactus and the succulents will turn pink or red when the temperature is cold, but the sunlight is coming through. So I just feel like with Hoyas, the temperature has to be moderate. Like when it's around that 70, 75 degree range and then you get that strong light, then the um, the Hoya will produce the anocyathin or whatever that chemical is called that will safely turn the plant red to protect it from the light, which is the sun stress look. But when you try to sun stress it, or when I've tried to sun stress it and it's hot outside and it's getting that light, then it'll turn yellow instead of the red and it'll it's probably going through some type of heat exhaustion. So the moderate temperature along with the strong light probably induces sun stressing much more than just oh blast it with some sun you know um that's just my, my my take on it i'm not sure um leave a comment if you know anything about that but i do notice that people uh with strong led grow lights can just evenly sun stress their hoyas because it's probably because the the plant is probably in on a shelf or a cabinet that's in a controlled temperature and it's getting that strong LED so it can safely sun stress. But yeah, this is Hoya Sigillatis. Uh, let me go ahead and move on. This is the Hoya Macrophylla. This has also been, uh, I think, renamed Hoya Latifolia, but this is the variegated version. I've had this one for a long time. It has not grown amazingly for me like i've seen other people's hoya macrophyllas grow it put out this all white leaf and then it put out this all uh, mint leaf and then the other ones look like the normal macrophylla but it's not growing really fast um but i still like it <laughs> and, and like i said um, i'm not going to worry about the slow growth on it because when whenever i finally get it right boom like a grenade like a machine gun blah, 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 it's gonna just put out a, a, a lot of leaves you know that's how these hoyas do 
It's a Hoya Macrophylla. Moving on, I think you guys have seen this before. This is the Hoya Yeterii Variegated. I have this one growing in um, Lekka, and, it, and it's doing pretty fine. But somehow I need to get this full. I, I don't know. Maybe if I see like a full pot of these in one of these stores, I might just go ahead and buy that because I'm tired of waiting on this one. This one is growing a little bit slow for me also. Hoya Yeterii Variegated. So next, we have one of my favorite new Hoyas right here. This is the Hoya Abovada Variegated. Yeah, I finally got this one. I got this one from Yorba, uh, Yorba Plants, the Etsy seller. And this one is so cool. I can't wait till it goes crazy. Oh, in question, what... What does a Hoya flower smell like? Like, I, okay, so out of all these Hoyas, I've never got a peduncle. I've never, I have a, a pubicalyx outside. I didn't want to show you that one because it just, it, it doesn't look that good. But I never smelled the Hoya flower. I don't think I even seen a Hoya flower in bloom. And I watch a lot of these videos. Every time I get a Hoya, I go watch videos about Hoyas. And some of these people say, oh, the Hoya smell like marshmallows, butterscotch french toast sticks and 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 all of that sweet stuff i'm like i need my hoyas to bloom like that is a reward if it starts smelling like some french toast sticks uh, uh when i walk into my plant room like that's that's a reward like i'm hungry now <laughs> <laughs> yeah but hoya apovada uh variegated this one is cool Oh, look, and let me show you this. I have like some dried uh, Spanish moss on the top because I noticed that fungus gnats don't like this stuff. So I'm going to start top dressing some of my plants with this, um, this dry, brittle Spanish moss right here because pretty much it's like, it's like giving the fungus gnats an obstacle course in order to get down to that soil, you know, and uh, I had like a little battle with fungus gnats uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, I think I got all of them because the, the couple ones that, I, that that are left, it's gonna be like squid games in order for you to get down to this soil and go half on a baby like they've been doing, you know. So I top dress and I bottom water, <laughs> and it's been helping uh, get rid of the fungus gnats. I also use a mosquito bit tea. And that, and that pretty much did the trick also, but that's what this top dress stuff is all about. All right, next we have Hoya Polynera. I'm not sure if I told y'all, like I had a really long one and then I cut it and propagated. I've been multiplying these like crazy. And um, let me tell you, um, I recently sold a lot of these because everybody went crazy for them on my Facebook group when I, uh, posted them for sale but this is what I have left uh, and it's rooted and I can see some growth back there maybe you can see that and it looks like it has peduncles on on, on the on the nodes also but yeah this is holy uh, Hoya Palinura the fishtail Hoya I really like this one too and this one is uh, very easy. It grows quick and it can take cooler temperatures because I had this outside in 40 degree weather. Uh, the Carnosas can take that 40 degree weather also. Um, I, do be, I do often have them inside. Sometimes I bring them in. All right, so next up, this was almost my new favorite. So the Hoya Crimson Princess, uh, <laughs> she was in some trouble. But this new one right here, this is the Hoya Encrasada Variegated. Get into it. The variegation is crazy on this one. It has like the big rigid leaves. And these are some new baby leaves right here. This is crazy right here. Hoya Encrasada. 
Got this one from Yorba Plants on Etsy. So this is that one and um, I don't know. Who's to say this may become my new favorite. Um, I really like it. Uh, let me see. Uh, one more Hoya to show you. So I have these. I think you've seen these before. I got these from Houseplant Nation. This is Hoya Croniana Silver Splash. So if y'all remember, I purchased this and I cut it up to propagate it and it is already rooted. I don't know if you're going to be able to see any roots in there. Hoya croniana. This one is it's obviously rooted because those little two leaves on the top have gotten bigger. So I think uh, being that this one rooted so quick, I'm going to end up having a lot of these by the end of summer. <laughs> so I think that that's all the Hoyas that I got for you. That's my whole collection as of now. I actually have three other Hoyas in the mail being shipped to me right now and oh um did get the hoya sp philippines and then um i also got the hoya uh, what is it chow bang chow dang chow bang something like that this hoya is crazy it's one of those veiny furry hoyas like oh so crazy and i'm not sure what the other one was um I forgot what other Hoya that I got, but um, some, somehow I'll implement the new Hoyas that I recently got in um, a couple of my future videos. So, hey, I love the Aeroids, but listen to you Aeroid collectors out there. Hoyas are a good species to break the monotony of seeing philodendrons and anthuriums like all the time. Like these Hoyas are very interesting. The reward is the flower and... Um, you know, the reward is just, you know, getting a nice viney plant with some big veiny leaves. Like, that's, that's just as cool as a lot of the aeroids. Come on now. So, get into these Hoyas. Like, they, they, they are cool and they break up a lot of the monotony. That's all I got for you. Thank you all for tuning in.